Welcome back to the show. We are talking literature and everything writing and creative. Now, everyone has got a novel in them, I think, but how can you do it? Which way do you do it? Well, I've got just the person to tell you how our next guest, Alison K. Williams, is in the studio. Very nice to see you, Alison. Thank you, Lane. It's great to be here. I have been struggling and I need you in my life. I, you've, you've written a book. <laughs> I've written a book and I believe a lot of people have the same sort of essence mm -hmm. that they really want to get their creative juices flowing. Um, but how do you actually turn that into a novel? You are the person. So one of the great myths about writing is that you have to be talented and talent is like this secret magic sauce that only, you know, only Margaret Atwood gets talent. And it's not, it's a skill like anything else. I mean, just as though we can all learn to play the violin, we might not be a world-class violin player, but we can all play in a way that is pleasant to listen to. We can all write a good book. And the secret is really to explore dramatic structure so that your book either follows or doesn't follow but on purpose, a classic story module, and to learn to write better sentences. And that's practice. Nice. Have you been practicing? I have been practicing. <laughs> this is the thing. And what was what was really uh, crazy for me when I wrote my book, um, a lot of people were saying it was more difficult to write a children's book than it is a longer novel. And I was like, I don't see it that way. You know, it's it's like it's like contemporary art. There's less there, so the mistakes are a lot more obvious. I think it is harder to write a really quality children's book, um, and everybody thinks they want to because everybody is good at telling stories to their children. And that's my job as a coach: is how do you take that story inside of you and tell it in a way that honors how you want to tell it in your voice, but that also reaches the readers who need to read that book. Fantastic. Wonderful. It's actually, Alison helped me with both of my books, and I couldn't have reached the stage without her. So what I wanted to ask you is about the editing process, because I know this is your area of expertise. When you're starting out and you have a story to tell, you have no idea how many edits you need to do. I'm still doing edits. I got the book deal, I am still editing. So can you tell us a bit more about that whole process for any aspiring writers out there to know Absolutely. how long this road is? <laughs> <laughs> so the two really big things to remember are one, what is on the page your brain is filling in what's not on the page. Um, I, the, the editors say that the, the key red flag is when you get an email and the email says, here's my manuscript, all it needs is a quick proofread. No, what it needs is to be completely rewritten from the ground up with a greater oh, understanding oh. of dramatic structure and a better command of sentences. And that's why my book is called Seven Drafts. Um, because if I called it 17 drafts, no one would buy it. <laughs> but really, Really, you and I have both written books that took us more than 10 years to write because while the second book is often a lot faster, you know, usually you've been working on it in between, the first book, you're learning how to write a book and you're learning how to tell this particular story. And it is so much easier for me as an editor to look at someone's work from the outside and say, you're missing this, this, and this, this needs to be rearranged. Chapter two is actually chapter 10 and the book actually starts on page 50. So just cut those first 50 <laughs> pages. And if the author is brave enough to do that, very often it makes their book better because those first 50 pages are us telling the story to ourselves. We're laying out the backstory. We're discovering who the characters are. We're learning their voices. Then we take the beautiful, not at all wasted work of that first 50 pages. We pick out the little details that we need. We weave them into the rest of the book and we mercilessly hatch it out the first 50 pages. <laughs> Works every time. Alison, I know nothing about writing, so my question to you is slightly different, okay? So in this digital age that we are in, we are all hearing about the increasing prospect of artificial intelligence or AI taking over, and it has already affected so many different industries. As a writing coach, what is your take on this? Well, I myself have used ChatGPT. I got stuck on a plot point and I discovered ChatGPT will not tell you how to carry out a major jewelry heist at the New York <laughs> Metropolitan <laughs> Museum of Art. It, keep, it kept saying, I'm sorry, not I can't yet. give you that information. <laughs> um, I think as a place to talk through ideas with a non-judgmental listener who comes back to you with new ideas, that's a great place to explore AI. 
I don't think AI is yet capable of writing a beautiful book that speaks from a human to another human. The, the underneath is missing. We, and we need that underneath. We need that powerful, personal voice that right now only a human can deliver. So, Allison, I think uh, uh, so many people are watching us right now, watching you, listening to you. Hi. And they'd love some advice. So what are some of your top tips or some of the biggest mistakes for people to avoid who are writing their first book? So if you're writing your first book, go ahead and get to the end before you start fiddling with the beginning and the middle. Because as soon as you know where the book ends, it is so much easier to fix the middle and the beginning. Um, myself, when I write a novel, I write the beginning, I write the ending, I fill in some of the middle, then I make an outline and I figure out what's missing. The other thing I would say is get some good writing friends. Ideally, people who are better writers than you are, because writing friends are the secret to free feedback. Feedback that doesn't cost you anything and you can do it in your own time. And when you give feedback to other writers and they give feedback to you, it is so much easier to identify, oh, in Lane's book, here's the challenge, I don't like this character and here's why I don't like that character. And then Lane can tell me, oh, hey, in Allison's book, this setting just isn't realistic for me and here is why. And so when we get used to critiquing other people, it becomes easier to apply that to our own work. And I would also say keep going because the number one difference between writers who are published and writers who are not published is that the published writers keep going long after they feel entitled to be done. I remember, I remember you saying advice, that yeah. to me at the beginning, <laughs> and it really Can I ask you guys a question? Did you guys fight? Because I imagine this is such a, sorry, is that really? No, 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 no that's no. a great no, question. Because this is such, it's such an intimate uh, pro it process, is. and it's yeah. something that's so personal to you, and then someone's like, take out, knock out the first 50 pages, they're yeah. not good enough. Uh, that must be hard to deal with. So what kind of a relation? Guys, this is all on you now. It was my <laughs> first experience reaching out to an editor, and I had read her book, and I knew that she just knew her stuff through and through. So I was looking for somebody to challenge me a little bit. Because the question I was going to ask you actually is, you have a story, you think it's good, your friends and family and people who love you think it's great, oh yeah, do it. But then how do you know that it's subjectively good when everyone has different tastes? So I needed somebody impartial, and I just mm -hmm. went to her and I said, just give it to me straight. Yeah. And I remember with my first novel, she told me, you should lose like the first quarter of it. And then I oh. cried. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what, she's right. And it's the same feedback I got from my editors. And I did end up doing that heavy work. And I think it's that heavy, heavy work that makes you go to the next level. It's like working with any other kind of coach. Like if you were an Olympic runner and you get to the end of practice, it's not my job to say, ooh, good you job. ran real good. That yeah. was lovely. <laughs> it is my job to help you run faster. Mm -hmm. And being an editor, it's, it's an honor and it is a responsibility because you have to be able to give somebody the feedback they need to get better while still making them inspired to do the work. How do you make somebody go, oh man, it's gonna be really hard, I'm gonna have to do a lot of push-ups, but it's gonna make me run faster, so I'm gonna do it. And you did that for me. Thank you. Completely, I mean, it led to everything else that came after it with the agent and the book deal, so. You and were you that know first you... line of defense and <laughs> built that muscle. And you know you've got the right editor or the right teacher or the right writing coach when you go, ooh, but I kind of think they're right. right. I thought, I kind of knew I wasn't going to get away with yeah. that. You know, you can feel when the feedback is, is helpful and useful. Dina, I can see and tell that you want to write. I can see, I can feel it. You know it. what, can I tell you something? My husband's actually been writing a book that I've not read a single page of for the last year and a bit. And he, he won't tell me what the book's about, but I know that he's dedicating so much time and energy. And every time I ask him about it, he's like, I had to rework the first, I don't know how many chapters. I had to rework and just listening to you, better be watching the show right now, um, <laughs> and, and taking in that advice. I think it's really important, yeah. seven drafts. <laughs> yeah. well, one, of, one of the amazing tips that you gave was having a, a community of writers around you. And mm -hmm. I, I did exactly that. I'm part of a, a female author's troupe and we go for breakfast and we chat and everyone's got their books out and it's just wonderful, it's fantastic. So 
yeah, I'm the only male there, and it feels it like it, it looks crazy, but um, but it's so important. It's so important. So yeah, that's a fantastic tip. Yeah, and in a writing group, pay attention to who gives feedback that you go, oh yeah, I agree with that, because then you know whose feedback to take seriously on your own work. Because when you say, oh yeah, it, you know, Lane is totally right, and Dina's book needs this thing then I have to take Lane seriously when he gives a correction on my book because I know I trust his judgment on somebody else. Gosh, listening to all this, I almost want to write a book right now. <laughs> Do it. I don't even think I can write. <laughs> Alison, this has been so much fun. You've shared some very interesting tips with us and I think one of the biggest takeaways was to not rest on your laurels. Thank you so much for all the wonderful advice you've shared with us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Appreciate right, Dina, I believe you have some questions for Sarah. I do, Alison, if you could stay right there. Time to throw the spotlight over to you, Sarah. Ready. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions. This is DXB in 60. Just to get to know you a little bit, try to get through as many as possible in the 60 seconds. You ready? Let's go. Okay, let's <coughs> cue the clock. If you weren't a journalist or an author, what would you be doing? Costume designer in a theater. Oh, your motto in life and work. Luck favors the prepared. Love that. If you could choose one superpower, what would it be? know every language in the world. I can talk to everybody. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, a book that you're reading at the moment? Britney Spears' memoir, oh. The Woman in Me. I don't know if you know who's coming on our show tomorrow, but... Uh, Is it Britney? <laughs> no, it's her ex Let's husband. Okay, another subject. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> if you had to go to any holiday destination, what would it be? Bali. Um, your favorite author of all time? Margaret Atwood. The last thing that you Googled? Uh, Valentine's Day card for my husband, not written by ChatGPT. Okay. <laughs> Favorite TV show growing up? Friends. Any hidden talents? I can make a really good chicken pot pie from scratch, Random. but I didn't do it since the pandemic. Okay. And last one, what is your most used app on your phone? Instagram. It mm. is. Yeah, me too. All right. Thanks so much. And oh yeah, why Dubai? I have to ask that. I've lived here for 18 years. This is home. I cannot imagine anywhere else to live and raise my children and build a career. It is just, I have so much love for this city and all the people I've met here. I met my husband. I love Dubai. Wow. City of dreams. Right. Yeah. Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You've, uh, you've inspired me so much more to, to write a longer novel. Uh, and it. also, I can't wait to read your book as well. And me, yours. Well, thank thank you. you for having me. Thank you very much. Right, coming up, we have Lisa ready to perform her hit single. Stay tuned.